Hey guys, it's Sasha the Diva. Welcome home to Cab. Exciting, informative. I have it all for you today. I'm in Stone Mountain. So, my question is, are you 55 plus? Are you looking for a new place to live? I've got to tell you about Antioch AME Church. They formed a partnership with DeKalb County government. Amazing property. I'm talking about efficiencies to two bedroom apartments. They have movie rooms, they have game night, laundry facilities. This place is amazing and it's a safe place. I'm gonna be talking to the property manager, Melissa. She is an awesome person and you're gonna get excited just like I am excited. Now, as you know, holidays are right around the corner. Hosea, feed the hungry. First thing that I want to say that Elizabeth Amalami, you have done a amazing job in the community and we want to help you. Aviva is going to tell us how we can help the homeless. Also, three new senior centers being developed right now. Did you know that? Well, we're going to learn about it today. Diamond's going to tell us all about it today. It's happening right here on Welcome Home to Cat. But up first, we continue our report of how DeKalb County is at the forefront of foreclosure prevention. And when it came time to discuss a regional approach to this issue, DeKalb County was definitely at the table. The annual Peace by Peace event at the Carter Center called to action regional leaders and organizations to discuss new solutions and initiatives in response to the national foreclosure crisis. Now, many of the counties in Metro Atlanta have begun um, strategies, many strategies to address foreclosures, including enforcement, demolition of vacant properties, land banking, um, task forces, and of course managing the neighborhood stabilization program funds. This year's panel included DeKalb County CEO Burl Ellis, Gwinnett County Chairwoman Charlotte Nash, Clayton County Chairman Elgin Bell, and Rockdale Chairman and CEO Richard Oden. The panel focused on foreclosure responses at the local level and how private sector investment is helping to repopulate vacant neighborhoods in the region. CEO Burl Ellis discussed the One DeKalb Lives Home Ownership Initiative, among other county programs, and how DeKalb's successful initiatives could be utilized in other counties as well. We've also partnered with the private sector for one of our programs we call Get Home Now. Uh, and for people, first-time buyers, who might not otherwise have a high enough credit score to get a home, or for veterans, uh, we are making homes available <coughs> and moving families into those homes. Maurice Jones, the Deputy Secretary of HUD, served as the event's keynote speaker and offered words of encouragement and advice. Neighborhood stabilization investments have helped communities uh, reduce vacancies in hard-hit places and boost home prices. And while we still do have a long way to go, it's worth noting at this time that our economy has added private sector jobs for 29 straight months. Right, that is worth noting. Plenty of work to do. Thank you. That's that's 4.5 million jobs. Now we got a lot more to do, um, but don't be swayed by those who say nothing good is happening. Since its launch in 2010, this regional foreclosure initiative has always been about action, not just discussion. And however long it may take. This initiative continues to bring together officials from various agencies, jurisdictions, and other key stakeholders in an effort to help remedy the foreclosure crises piece by piece. And for more information about piece by piece, I want you to go to this website. Check it out, a lot of information. Do you like to window shop? So do I. We have so many houses available for you and DeKalb County. Come on, let's window shop together. It's Welcome Home again. Hey guys, 
guys, it's Sasha the Diva. Welcome home to Cab. I'm excited because I'm, of course, in DeKalb County, but I'm in Stone Mountain. And I have something for the seniors, 55 plus, a place that you can live and be safe. I have Melissa, she is the property manager, and she's gonna tell us all about this place. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Sasha. How you doing? I'm wonderful. I have to tell you, when I pulled up, I loved it. It was gated. Yes, we're a fabulous community and we're also safe. We're okay, tell me the exact address here. The address here is 4711 Bishop Ming Boulevard. That's Stone Mountain, Georgia, 30088. Now, did you get that address down? How many residents do we have here? We have over 200 seniors. That is so beautiful. Are you looking for a place to live? Do you want somewhere gated? Do you want something inexpensive? Because we're going to be talking about that. Now, let's talk about these beautiful apartments. Oh, so Oh, maybe I need a two bedroom. Maybe I need an efficiency. Do you have that for me? Yes, we do. We'll break it down for me. What is the square footage? And let's talk about the apartments a little bit. Well, we're a fabulous community. Right now, we are 100% occupied. Really? Yes. Wow. But we do carry efficiencies, one bedroom and two bedroom apartment homes. So our square footage for maybe a senior male who doesn't uh, want need a lot of space, we have the efficiencies for two that are 450 square feet. Okay. And then we might have for the senior who's relocating from a home, a larger floor plan villa style. And those are about 100 square feet. Because what I am noticing about seniors, they do want to downsize. They don't want to worry about taking care of the lawn. So this is the perfect place for you. Now, in the kitchen, you know, they still like to cook. And you know, the holidays are right around the corner. Is everything in the kitchen that they need? Yes, we have full kitchens. We have stoves, refrigerators with ice makers. We also have dishwashers. And we also have microwaves. Love it. It. Now, do we have washing machine and dryer? We don't provide a washer machine and dryer, but we do have the hookups in each unit. So that means I can go buy a washing machine and dryer and I have it in my apartment. Yes, you can, but we do have a laundry facility. You have a laundry facility on the property? Yes. I love this place. You have everything here for them. Now, if you're 55 plus, you do not have small children. You do not have a two, three year old running around. Do you agree with me? Absolutely. If you're 55 plus and have a two year old, whew. But okay, now if I have grandchildren, it's okay for my grandchildren to visit, but they can't live here. Sure. See, this is exclusively for you. That means it's very peaceful here, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> yes. I have to tell you, Melissa, when I first pulled up, the first thing that I said was beautiful. Second thing I said, it was so peaceful here. Then I was just walking around. I wandered into the movie room. Girl, tell me about the movie room. Well, we have two fabulous movie theater rooms. We do uh, Friday night movies on both facilities at 5.30. We do popcorn or we might have dinner and a movie. So does that mean that my grandchildren can come over or my son and daughter can come hang out and watch a movie with me also? Yes. That is really nice. Tell me about the other amenities. Well, we have a fitness center. We can exercise. We have a library with computer access. We take the time, go into the study, read a good book. We have a fabulous private dining room that can be reserved for holiday events. Holidays right around the corner. You can have your family come over. We have some turkey or whatever you want to eat. That's nice. What else you have? We also have a lot of sitting areas with wonderful fireplaces. Mm, you can cuddle up. I like that. Can you please tell me? I love bingo. Yes, we have a, actually an on-site res resident services coordinator who coordinates activities for us. So we have, of course, bingo. We have a line dancing class. Line dancing? Yes. You're kidding. No. They get up and start dancing. Yes. All right. And, they and get that's down. good. That's exciting. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yes. You yes, love it here, yes. don't you? I do. And you know what? We know that you're going to love it here also. Now, there is a waiting list, right? Yeah. Can you kind of take me quickly through the process and tell me about that a little bit? Actually, we have a waiting list, and the only thing you need to do to apply for our waiting list is to come in and fill out an application. If it was my parents, 55 plus, I would want them to live here because it's safe, it's beautiful, 
it's peaceful and it's affordable. I want you to check out their website address or call Melissa because you're waiting for those phone calls, aren't you? I sure am. And she's such a sweet person. Also, we're going to be talking to Reverend Wicker. It was his vision. It was his dream. And what a beautiful dream. Also, after the break. There's new construction in three major parts of DeKalb County. Stick around on DCTV and I'll have all that information coming up for you right after the break. That and so much more. It's Welcome Home to DeKalb. Hey guys, it's Sasha the Diva. Welcome home to Cap. Well, you had an opportunity to tour a beautiful new apartment right in Stone Mountain, but it's for 55 plus. It's Antioch Manor Estates. Oh, love the movie room, the fitness center, the beauty salon. Well, we're going to talk to the person. This was his vision. This was his dream. Reverend Wicker of Antioch AME Church. Hello, darling. Hello there. How you doing? Great. What a beautiful place. Please tell me about your vision and developing this place for 55 Plus. The philosophy of the Antioch AME Church is to serve the community from the cradle to the grave. Okay. In 2000, the county's vision was uh, to have housing for persons 55 and better. I read that vision, studied that vision, and proceeded uh, out of the need for housing for persons 55 and better in my congregation, and decided for quality housing to be brought by the church. And as a result, we proceeded to put together a community development corporation. From the community development corporation, we began to dream about what senior housing should look like, be like, and feel mm -hmm. like. So I connected with uh, persons who are in the development community and said simply to them uh, that I wanted a product that was equal and better to that which is in Buckhead. Right. In South Decay. And as a result, uh, we began to put together a development team of um, dreamers, persons, architects, persons in the financial world, and out of which we came up with a village. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this 32 acres was close by, and um, believe it or not, my neighbor owned the property. Okay and uh, we proceeded to negotiate with him to buy this property for the purpose of developing for persons 55 and better for senior housing. Great partnership with DeKalb County government, but the partnership with the community development, can we talk about that a little bit? Yes. I met with Miss Chris Mars. She's so fabulous. And uh, <laughs> out of the relationship with Chris, Chris assisted us in the financing of this project and uh, we have been truly blessed by knowing how the county has helped us. Yeah, and I have to tell you, Chris Morris, you're doing a fantastic job. Reverend Wicker, beautiful place. And I can tell that you sat at the table and designed. That's correct. The decor, the colors, I just feel that from you. And you have made this a very warm place and very inviting for 55 plus. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sasha. Now, guess what? There's not one, not two, three new senior centers that are being developed right now in DeKalb County. So, if you want to have yourself a good time and travel and get into some arts and crafts or maybe line dance a little bit, Diamond's going to tell us all about it. Hey, Diamond. Imagine a place where you can gather with friends for a bite to eat, work out, and enjoy a full roster of classes ranging from line dancing to crochet and even surf the web in a state-of-the-art computer lab, all in one place right in your own community. That's the reality DeKalb County seniors will soon enjoy in a total of three new senior centers slated to open by the end of next year. I see the seniors out there. Can you all believe this is really happening? Isn't this cool? I love it because it have you, some, you have somewhere to go every day and interact with other people. It'll just be better to be able to leave our things there and uh, know, know we have a home. 
Recently, DeKalb County broke ground on two of the three new senior centers planned, including the North DeKalb Senior Center located on Malone Drive in Shambly, and the new South DeKalb Senior Center, which will bring new excitement to this mixed-use development planned for Candle Road in Decatur. For the last four years, we've been working overtime to bring quality of life improvements to DeKalb County. I, I don't think anybody here doesn't know that we've been living through the worst economy since the Great Depression. We really had to form strategic partnerships. We've had to work our relationships with the Obama administration. We've had to really roll up our sleeves and go to work. And look at the results. Look at the results. Getting to work in DeKalb included making certain seniors have quality places to call home and comprehensive programming and facilities where DeKalb seniors can live life to the fullest. I do want to just quickly go back and congratulate CEO Ellis and the commissioners here today. In 2009, they passed a resolution to say that the DeKalb County will support lifelong communities. They will support communities where people can, all ages can live throughout their lifetime, where older people can age in place. DeKalb County was one of the first counties in the metro Atlanta region to adopt its own resolution supporting lifelong community principles, resulting in the launch of partnerships and research which led to a progressive and innovative concept to grow the county's senior services offerings. And Commissioner Rader and I were talking after a public hearing one day and we were saying if we do a Section 108 loan we can get more than one done. And as a result of that conversation after a meeting, we were able to get $14 million in federal funds so that we can do the senior center at here in Chamblee, the one in South DeKalb, and one that is getting started in Central DeKalb County. This senior center really is uh, evidence of the evolution of DeKalb. Um, we came from being a sort of a new family bedroom type of a community, and now as people have stayed and lived their life in DeKalb, uh, they need these types of resources, places where as seniors they can continue to be part of the community, they can continue to see their friends and to be able to be active and uh, vibrant people uh, continuing in DeKalb. So uh, we've had to respond as a county to those needs. In total, that's 45,000 square feet dedicated to DeKalb County's active senior population. That's 15,000 right here in North DeKalb County, 15,000 in South DeKalb County, and 15,000 square feet in Central DeKalb County. All gold and making certain that DeKalb County senior citizens have an improved quality of life. All three facilities will include a commercial kitchen, community meeting rooms, computer labs, fully equipped fitness rooms, courtyards, indoor and outdoor seating, and access to walking trails. It's more for your development as a human being to be around other people. And after you've worked all of your life, to start enjoying things and going places. In my life, it has helped me. It's motivated me to be more energized, more eating healthy, and doing fun, fun, fun things. I'm ready for more of the same. Funded by federal dollars, all three projects are also part of larger plans for progressive community development in all three respective surrounding areas. The seniors here have been homeless for a very long time, living well in their rented space at Senior Connections and being well taken care of, but so, so looking forward to their own center. So it's exciting to see that the rebirth of the area and those new uses come in. And while seniors in North DeKalb can expect to enjoy a center which includes access to senior connections, the Doraville Marta Station, and the newly constructed Mercy Housing Complex, those in South DeKalb will enjoy a mixed-use complex boasting a site for new senior housing planned in the near future, a new library, and the recently completed streetscape and sidewalk along Candler Road. And it's just really a great time. We watched and watched and watched they talk about what Candler Road can become, and now you're living in the moment. It's that promise of lifelong, comprehensive programming which brought these seniors out in the brisk autumn air to hear the hot news of all that the future of DeKalb County has to offer. 
DeKalb County has a commitment to our seniors and I'm proud to be here to see us finally breaking the ground and I expect within a year we'll have a beautiful new facility and we'll be able to better serve our seniors. It's, it's a great day. And that's a message that we all should share, that we live in a great county, that we're doing progressive things, and we're doing things on behalf of the people uh, that deserve it the most, our seniors. I feel fantastic because this is a move forward. We are moving forward, much progress. And we really appreciate our commissions and all those that were are responsible for getting the job done. That's more construction and even more development taking place right here in DeKalb County. Now construction is expected to be completed on all three new senior facilities by December of 2013. Be sure to check us out right here on DCTV Channel 23 for regular updates or of course you can visit the DeKalb County website. For Welcome Home DeKalb, I'm Diamond Lewis. Sasha, back to you. <laughs> Thanks, Diamond. When Welcome Home to Cab returns, we're taking it out of the house and to the streets with a story about a local organization that's helping thousands have a little brighter holiday. That story coming up. That and much more on Welcome Home to Cab right here on DCTV Channel 23. Hey guys, it's Aisha the Diva. Welcome home to Cab. And I always see you on Facebook. Hit me on my fan page, Sasha the Diva on the mic, or tweet me at the Diva Sasha. See, Welcome Home to Cab is all about families purchasing homes and living in this great county of DeKalb County. But we do have so many families in a homeless situation. Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless, Elizabeth Amalami, I love you for all of your work in the community. We're going to talk to Aviva on how you and I can help Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless. If you want to feed the hungry, you've got to start preparing months in advance. And at Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless Headquarters, volunteers stay busy helping the needy and sorting canned goods, clothing, and other items all year round. Now over here, we have people separating the clothes because uh, we, we get a, a tremendous amount of clothes in. The organization gears up four times a year to serve these kind of holiday dinners to an estimated 20,000 people on Thanksgiving, Christmas, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, and Easter. And it takes a lot of careful planning to pull off these kind of feasts. And it all begins right here at the DeKalb County Jail where the meal preparation and cooking begins on the eve of each holiday event. We cook a thousand turkeys, 800 hams, we cook 900 of the large number 10 cans of corn, green beans, and yams. We have cornbread, we have stuffing, uh, I, I don't know how many pallets of stuffing. Dozens of volunteers arrive at the jail's kitchen on the afternoon before a big dinner. Volunteers do everything. They come and cook the food and they do the entire event. Cooking continues through the night, with some chefs staying until 4 or 5 in the morning. We'll be here throughout the night until the last truck is packed up and, and, and the food is taken to the world and come with some. The mega holiday feasts actually started out much smaller. The former DeKalb Commissioner, Reverend Dr. Hosea Williams, and his wife Juanita hosted the first modest dinner to about 100 people at the Wheat Street Baptist Church back in 1971. When he saw a homeless man so hungry that he ate the paper wrapped around a fish sandwich on Auburn Avenue, he went right across the street and started Jose Feed the Hungry. He would always beg for the poor when he would never beg for himself. We're often reminded around the holidays that there are those in need, but at Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless, they're helping out all year round. The initial inspiration to help one needy man has mushroomed into the legacy it is today. The feeding part is just a small part of what we do. The organization also stresses homeless prevention with rent and utility assistance, housing placement, budgeting workshops, and nutritious food and toiletry care packages. Each year, Hosea Feed the Hungry serves nearly a thousand residents right here in DeKalb County. 
it takes a partnership between the business community, the faith-based community, the parents, as well as the nonprofit community. At the holiday dinners, the needy can also receive free medical care, clothes, hot showers, barber and beautician services, job referral, legal aid, phone calls nationwide, and more. Well, you know, the Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless has done a phenomenal job serving uh, those who are most in need. Afimo Omalami is co-director of Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless. For more than 20 years, he has worked behind the scenes for the organization founded by his father-in-law. When he died, Elizabeth and I, you know, made a choice. Are we going to take over and continue the legacy or are we just going to go our own way? Well, we decided this is what we're going to do. Mr. O, as his volunteers call him, knows there is always work to be done. People are hungry right in our own country, and we see them every day. And they come not for themselves, but for the children and their grandchildren. They say, i got to give my baby some milk. How can you not be moved and touched by these situations? Most of the people we serve are not the homeless, but the working poor. People who get out and work hard every day, they're just simply not making enough to keep up with the, with the expenses of affordable housing and medicine. The system is producing more and more poverty in America, and organizations like Jose Feed the Hungry must exist so people don't get desperate and start committing crimes because they're hungry. The initial vision of the Reverend Hosea Williams has grown into a massive undertaking today. And thankfully, the generosity of volunteers and donors has kept pace. Reporting from the DeKalb County Jail, Aviva Hoffman, welcome home DeKalb. Sasha, back to you. Thank you, Aviva. Now, this is what you can do. I always say that you can either volunteer or you can make a donation. Check out Hosea Feed the Hungry and Homeless website or pick up the phone and call them. Okay, guys, I will see you next time. And you know what? Happy holidays. I love you from everybody and welcome home to Canada.